YouTubers, what's going on? Alright, today we're going to talk about thread sizes. So, when I first start, started doing upholstery, I didn't know anything about thread sizes. So, I was getting all kind of threads. Um, I got a whole bunch of thread, but I don't use all the thread I got because as I was coming across my learning curve, I learned what threads was better. Now, uh, I got four sizes of threads just to show you um, a few of the different sizes. I don't use the real low sizes and I don't use the real high sizes that they use for like that the high sizes like 207 to me is like a shoestring or something, you know what I mean? You don't I don't want I don't use nothing that big and then so I don't have nothing like that. But I do got this right here, it's a 40 and it's real thin. It's like real thin. So this is like for smaller machines, not a commercial machine. I'm pretty sure you can use it for a commercial machine, but you won't get the same effects. It's just too thin. Um, so the sizes that I use, I use anything from a 92 to a 138. And the sizes, unlike um, speaker wire, where you get a zero gauge, that's the fattest gauge, and then as you go up, like two, four, six, eight, it gets smaller. But with upholstery thread, it's opposite. It's small to big as far as size and number. So with that being said, um, this burgundy one is a 92. And I don't know if you can see. The difference of the thread. But the 92 is way thicker than the, the 40. And maybe I should have grabbed a different color 40. But it is what it is. Uh, if I... 92, I use that rarely. Um, like I said, I was gauging the sizes. So I would just type in a poultry thread and whatever came up. I order, but then when I noticed the sizes were different, I when I started sewing, I didn't get the look I wanted. So I looked into the thread sizes. After I noticed the size of the thread, I, I made mental notes on the size I was buying. So I would know what the results I was getting according to the size thread and if I liked it or not. So 92 was decent. It was all right. Uh, to me, a 92 is probably like better for a bob, you know, the bobbin thread, you know, the wind the bobbin on. Um, this right here is a 135. Give me a second. My bad. Alright, so you see the 92 on the left of the burgundy and the 135 on the right, the purple. So that's a good one. It comes up real good. And matter of fact, I had got this to go for them Tahoe seats, the green ones, the Aquaman joint. But I'm going to have to switch up on that because the dude, he don't, he's not going to do any of his, his interior hints. The reason why he went with the gray vinyl to go with that green color because he wanted to try to um, limit the work he did on the interior. So he's going to freshen up the gray that is already on the inside, which means he's not going to do like door panels or anything like that. So to go with a louder color thread that won't going to be in the car, I decided not to do that because it wouldn't flow. It wouldn't flow like how I, I, I like things to go, so I didn't do it. But I did find a gray in a size 138, which is what we're coming up to right now, which is this red. This red is a 138, and it is the biggest size that I use when I'm doing upholstery. And now, uh, so this is a 135 on the purple and a 138 on the red. So... It's not really too much difference in, in these two, 
because they so close. So these right here, them the ones I really run to when I'm doing my upholstery. A 135 and a 138. Uh, everything else to me is a little small and depending on if you're trying to do a design in the seat or you just want to go back factory, you know, you can probably just run with a 92 and be good with it. But um, if you want it to be pronounced and stand out a little bit more, 135 or 138 is what you wanna uh, what you wanna grab. So with that being said, I hope that helps somebody. And before I leave, I had a, a, a comment on one of my videos. It was like, how do you how do you uh, thread your sewing machine? All right, so I got a console, but most. Sewing machines that I came across had two tensioners. They're going to have one at the top, and they're going to have one right here. Let me cut this light off. Let's see if that's better. All right, so when you wind the, temp the tensioner at the top, this is what I do. I come in at the top. I make a loop. Come at do this one. That gives me enough tension, pre-tension, because what this does is it takes the tension out the spool. Since you got a spool, a spool, it's like if you let it go loose, it'll be like a whole bunch of curls, you know, and you don't want that. So this right here is the first line of the fence against that. It's starting to take the curl out right here. Then you come to this tensioner. And it's the same as this one. You see? Loop on the first one. Skip the second one. Go back into the third one. And this is the same way. It's just vertical, kind of, instead of horizontal like the, the other one. Go through the first one. Skip the second one. Come out the bottom one. Go around this. This right here also holds tension. A little wheel and you can tighten it depending on the size thread you're using um that's gonna be up to you if you if your thread starts um if it gets stuck or it snaps or something it might be too uh tight you might want to unloosen it and if it's too baggy like um you'll see with the thread you might want to tighten it all right so from this little tiny wheel don't forget your hole you want to hit every little spot that the machine got for the the thread. Come down, wheel this, go around this wheel, and then it's a black wire. Go up over the black wire, under the metal arm, then come back through a hole, come up through the arm, come back down to the uh, matching hole right here on this side come down right here I forgot what that's called but um it's just a metal bar with like some um like a piece of wool or something in it to I guess it's like the last line of the lint or something like that whatever it does that's what you want to run your thread to now we get into the last parts on the bottom <clears throat> Excuse me. It's gonna be a hole. You run your thread through here. <clears throat> now you got one more place to go. Hold on. Let me get it right for you. Alright. So after you come through that hole right here, you go through the eye of the needle. And you come through from left to right. And that's it. And well, you know, if you got your bob your bottom bobbin thread already out, you can go ahead and uh start stitching. Um if not then you're gonna have to do that, but that's in another video. Uh so again, for the size threads for your upholstery, 40, stay away from that. Unless you got a little tiny machine, 92. That's cool. Uh, more or less uh, a bobbin thread. That's what I use it for. Or I use it for um, basic seats 
or seats that's like maybe tan or something light and I got a, a thread, you know, it's all right for that. But if you really want to make a statement, 135 or 138, those are sizes that you should look into. And sometimes you can't find certain colors and certain sizes. That's why another reason why I got a, a variety of sizes. But again, YouTube, holla at me. Won't stop, won't quit. Peace.